The manifestation of God on earth is in human beings. Human beings had existed in spirit form. Spirits and angels are the same and they are servants of God and they cannot be seen by human eyes. From time to time Jehovah God sends his spirits or angels to the earth to carry out specific assignments. Their assignments may be constructive or destructive. Spirits may be seen either by a. Dreams or vision or b. Physical manifestation. Dreams or vision. Spirits are seen when the dreamer or visioner is not conscious, but they are rather in a state of trance. For example, the visions of John the Divine on the Isle of Patmos, as recorded in the book of Revelation. Physical manifestation. When spirits are sent to earth, they will take on the form of life there, that is, they will appear as human beings. They may be seen for seconds, minutes, or hours, and then disappear. This is called short-term manifestation. Example 1. The angel that appeared to the Virgin Mary and to the shepherds. 2. The angel that appeared to Mary Magdalene after our Lord Jesus Christ was risen. And 3. The angel that appeared to the apostles while our Lord Jesus Christ was ascending up to heaven. On the other hand, spirits may be seen on earth for days, weeks, months or years. This is called long-term manifestation. The spirits are born through the womb of babies. This, no, the spirits are born through the womb as babies. They grow up into adults. They then carry out their assignments and after that they depart this world after say 20, 40 or 90 years according to the length of time which the father has given for completion of their assignments. All human beings on earth have specific assignments during their lifetime. For example, a human being may be assigned to a particular family, community village, town, or country to carry out certain, certain assignments. He grew up from infancy, goes to school, college, or university, and later become a doctor, farmer, lawyer, professor, or prime minister, president, pope, or king, etc. After the end of his assignment, he is transferred in spirit form by God to perform other assignments at a different place. Heaven is God's throne and earth is footstool. When in heaven, God will be in the form of an angel. On earth, he will appear as a human being. Jehovah God has visited his vineyard, the world, from time to time and he reveals himself to whosoever it pleases him. Since the creation of the world, God has sent certain special human beings to the earth to carry out specific assignments. Where one has finished, another one takes over. It is like building a house. The person who does the roof is not the one who does the flooring and the walls. The plumbing is done by another person. So does the electrical wiring, the carpentry, the painting, etc. Adam, Enoch, Noah, Melchizedek, Moses, Elijah, John the Baptist, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader, Lumba, Lumba, Bu are all godly names. They were all sent to earth to carry out specific assignments, and each one's assignment differs from the other. Adam's assignment. Adam came into the world by being molded from the clay, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The significance of this breath is that God dwelt inside Adam. Adam is the house of God, and he came into existence for that purpose. If you go to work on your farm, the first thing that you would do is to erect a hut for you to shelter. You are told that God does not dwell in houses built with hands. All human beings are the house of God. Adam was the dwelling place of the Almighty God. The Holy Spirit dwelt in him. It was the same Spirit that Adam had, which caused our Lord Jesus Christ to reincarnate as a quickening Spirit. It is the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ that reincarnates as the Holy Spirit of truth. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is expedient that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. One Spirit reincarnates to many persons. Enoch's Assignment Enoch came into the world to inspect if all the creations of God were in their respective order as they were created. He was an inspector, and when he inspected the positions of things, he discovered that they were not in the order as God had created them, and he submitted his findings to God. That was why God said that he regretted creating man in his own image, and that it repented him that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Enoch submitted his final report that sin had dominated mankind, and God had no alternative than to take the decision to destroy mankind and the world. Noah's Assignment God remembered his promise to Adam that except a holy blood was shed, his sins would not be atoned for. In order to fulfill his promise to Adam, God did not destroy all mankind, but he saved a person. Noah came into the world to save the remnant of the children of God. He preached repentance to the people for 120 years, but they ignored, taunted, and ridiculed him. That is exactly what the present generation is doing. After taking his family, along with one peer, male and female, of each kind of animate things into the ark, the rest were destroyed by the great flood. God made a covenant that he would never destroy the world again with flood, no matter how sinful the world might be. Melchizedek's Assignment The main assignment of Melchizedek was to bless the people who were saved after the flood and to set all things in order because despite the flood, mankind would continue to sin. He entered into a covenant with God never to destroy the world again with flood. He had a duty to teach and demonstrate righteousness, peace, love, forgiveness, patience, and other godly virtues to the people. Melchizedek was God Almighty that became flesh and dwelt amongst the people. Only Abram recognized him. He blessed Abram, and Abram paid him tithes, which was the equivalent of one-tenth of his booty, 
in acknowledgement of the divine priesthood of Melchizedek. People did not recognize him as God on earth, just like what the people did during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, and like what this generation is now doing to the Holy Spirit of Truth personified in our midst. The Assignments of Moses Jehovah God and his Christ told Adam that his seed would sojourn in a strange land and will remain in bondage for 400 years. And after that, God would judge the nation that, that enslaves them. Acts chapter 7, verses 6 to 7. Moses came to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt in fulfillment of God's promise. He led them out of Egypt and disappeared on his way to the promised land. Without the coming of Moses, the Israelites would not have been delivered. Pharaoh was the greatest king on earth with his army and weapons of war. Who was Moses to appear before him and demanded the release of the Israelites? Moses, Moses did not possess guns, swords, machetes, and other weapons of war, nor did he have an army. Moses was in fact God manifested in another form to reveal his power and glory. Romans chapter 9 verse 17. He appeared before Pharaoh with only a crook's staff and performed all the great wonders in Egypt. Many people do not believe that it is God who kills and keeps alive. You have heard what happened to Pharaoh and his army. Moses delivered the Israelites from Egypt, gave them commandments, and set them on their course to Canaan. The mission of Elijah. Elijah came to punish all those who did not abide by the commandments and ordinances of God, particularly idolaters. Elijah was a destroyer, and he came specifically to destroy the worshippers of Baal. It is the same God performing his assignment through different persons. When you continue to say that God is love and cannot kill, and that it is only Satan that kills, who sent down fire from heaven to destroy 400,000 worshippers of Baal? St. Luke chapter 9, verses 52 to 56. Elijah came to reveal to that generation that God is Alpha and Omega, and that he is the only power to kill and keep alive. Therefore, all those who do not submit to his government will be destroyed like the worshippers of Baal. The mission of John the Baptist. John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Luke chapter 1 verse 17. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 to, verses 5 to 6. The spirit of Elijah came back in the person of John the Baptist to perform different assignments. He came to prepare the hearts and minds of the people to accept Christ. He preached repentance and purification. Without him, nobody would have accepted or believed in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. He spent most of the time in the wilderness, fasting and praying. The scripture says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. John taught the people purity of hearts and minds so that they would recognize the promise. Messiah. Peter, James, John and other apostles and other disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ were disciples of John the Baptist. The mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. His assignment 
was to shed his precious blood for the remission of sins. He came in fulfillment of God's promise to Adam that without the shedding of a holy blood, his sins would not be atoned for and man would not regain the paradise lost in the Garden of Eden. Adam had defiled the house of God. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. God's first house in Adam was defiled, and the Holy Spirit could not dwell in him. The shedding of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ gave rise to the purification of the house of Adam and the arrival of the Holy Spirit on earth, St. John chapter 16, verse 7 to 8. The assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest. Without the shedding of his precious blood, God Almighty would not have come down to earth to dwell with men in flesh and bone. The blood of cows and goats could not atone for our sins and purify us. Though through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, all our sins from Adam till now are forgiven. The Assignment of the Holy Spirit of Truth Now that the Holy Blood has been shed for the remission of sins, the Holy Spirit of truth promised by our Lord Jesus Christ has come for the final assignment. Read St. John chapter 16 verses 7 to 13. The assignments of the Holy Spirit of truth are 1. To establish the kingdom of God on earth, a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Two. To reform sinners and bring them up to the standard required by God. 3. To teach all nations the ways of God and rebuke sinners. Two, 4. To judge all nations. and 5. To rule all nations with a rod of iron. The kingdom of God on earth is the brotherhood of the cross and star, and its sole spiritual head Leader Olumba Olumba Obu is the Holy Spirit of Truth personified. It is only the Holy Spirit of Truth that can reform sinners. No other person has succeeded in changing a sinner and let them refrain completely from committing sins and vices. We have now learned that one spirit reincarnates several times. Therefore, our four parents, whom we claim are dead, are in fact alive in new bodies at some other places in the world. The Almighty Father himself has reincarnated several times on earth, but the hearts and minds of the inhabitants of this earth are so focused on the carnal things and worldly pleasures that they fail to recognize him. It is said that God is in the world, but the world do not know him, but he knows everyone. The Almighty God and his heavenly hosts are now on earth. Summary Man had existed in spirit form only. All human beings had existed in spirit. Man and God is one entity. Man is part and parcel with God. The real man is soul. Soul is a spiritual spark of God or source. Soul, spirit and angel are the same. All human beings have the spirit embodied in them. The spirit, which is God, is indestructible. There is no death because God cannot die. The appropriate term for death is transfer. The spirit is extracted from the body and is sent by God to another place to carry out other assignments. One spirit 
can reincarnate several times. One spirit, many persons. The real man is soul. Man's soul, spirit, and angels are interrelated. They all refer to one thing, that is self in many colors or forms evolving, evolved, and highly evolved. Soul is bodiless, extremely brilliant, and highly potent, being a spiritual spark of God, the source of all energy and life. Man is the apex of creation. When the soul or spirit becomes flesh, it is clothed in five bodies. One, etheric body or mind. Two, mental body. Three, causal body. Four, astral body. And five, physical body. The soul takes on all these bodies in that order. When you look at a human being, he has all these bodies, but you can only see the physical body. Brethren, a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let all those who have ears to hear, hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.